With the holidays coming up and family arriving soon, what better way to celebrate than to play rock band together? And then, oh yeah, I remembered. I broke it. I don't know if it's quite called the Destroyer, but it's close. It's a modified Dixon foot pedal, and it's made to be used with the rock band system. So perhaps we can reverse engineer this and make another one as these things are no longer available. As a start, I purchased a used Dixon. You can tell it doesn't have quite the responsiveness. It doesn't have the dual action spring here, but there's a couple other mechanisms that we need to work out. The bass beat goes along with that nice thump. This one sounds like a rickety old grandpa's chair. Also, how is it getting this feedback system? And I think it has to do with magnets in this circuit here. Something in this box. It almost looks like those um, boxes that you put on your windows and doors to see if someone breaks in. Our foot pedal communicates with the drum kit via a 1 8 inch or 3.5 millimeter mono cable. So let's crimp a ring connector to each of the bare wires. These will tie into our reed switch at two different poles, which I'll explain in a moment. Reed switches open and close based on the local magnetic field. We want to position our switch so that it can be influenced by the tapping of our pedal. So let's position it beneath where our magnet will be mounted. It's important to note that there are three poles. It can be either wire, but at least one needs to be connected to the pole marked COM. The other is a little more matter of preference. I want the pedal to register on the downbeat, so I'll wire the other one to the NC or normally closed pole. If you want it to register upon the upbeat, wire it into the NO or normally open pole. Now let's epoxy a size 6 rubber stopper, which will not only provide a feedback thump, but will also allow for a faster recoil of the pedal. I added a glob of solder onto each ring clamp as the vibrations during testing was dislodging the wires. This slight modification actually made an incredible difference. Now the critical part is the magnet and switch placement. Tweaking for accuracy was the most time consuming part of this project. I finally settled on an 8mm neodymium magnet on the chain's end nut and had perfect precision. The final tweak that I'll do off video is I'll purchase a countersunk neodymium magnet so that I'm able to fix it more securely on that bolt. It's not going to go anywhere right now, but I fear that if it gets stored away then it could shift or maybe stick to something else. While rather simple, I cannot stress enough to those of you out there who are going to be attempting this mod that you will spend the majority of your time tinkering with magnet location, size, and potency. Don't get frustrated. Be methodical. You will get it right. Yeah, baby. If you feel I earned it, please click that like button, and I hope to see you subscribers in the future. Thank you for watching.